Welcome to Gems of Knowledge with your host, David Bellman and Justin Crawl. Each week, our experts will answer all of your jewelry questions with Rachel Putney, our social media maven, who will relay your questions to our experts. And now, here's your host, David Bellman. And welcome to another episode of Gems of Knowledge. I'm your host, David Bellman, and I'm here with my co-host, the lovely Rachel. Hello. And of course, Justin. Nice to see you both again. You Dave. Too. Yay, we're here. <laughs> How are you? Well, we have a serious issue to talk about today. Uh, sure. This has been a problem in our industry for a long time, and it has to do with insurance appraisals. Uh, a lot of people get appraisals when they buy jewelry, and they think, oh my God, I bought something for $5,000, and they appraise it for $10,000, so wow, it must be worth $10,000. Well, that's not the case at all. So that's just part of what we're going to talk about today. Why do people think that? Oh, because first of all, a lot of jewelers just tell them, well, you know, I'm going to sell it to you for $5,000, but you're a good friend of mine. You know, I'm going to sell it to you for five, but it's really worth $10,000. And but, that's how they get away with it. But common sense wise, why would anyone believe? Anyone would go buy all the jewelry they can and go and sell it, and they'd make a huge profit if that was the case. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. Well, and of course, people want to believe that it's more valuable. But but people use appraisals as marketing tools. Right. They want people to think that they're getting a really good deal. Yes. And as we know, because you don't have to have any credentials to do appraisals, people can write whatever they want on those appraisals, put any value that they want to put on it. There's no criteria. They can appraise it for 5,000. They can appraise it for 25,000. Right. right. You can write any number that you want on that. Any appraiser can write any number they want on that appraisal to put a value on it. And just so you know, if you go to the insurance company when something's lost and they say, hey, I have it appraised for 25000 I want my check for twenty five, they they're going to say, no, we're going to go into the market and call somebody like me. And they're going to say, hey, Bellman Jewelers, what can you replace this for? And I'm going to say, well, this stone, I can replace it for 10000 And right. the insured goes, well, what about my $25,000? Well, the appraiser who made the appraisal was just jacking up the price to make it look like you were getting this great value when, in fact, you weren't. Right. But they were paying premiums on the 25000 the whole time. Well, yeah, let's not exactly. get into that. No. Now, now we're getting into the woods. Oh, I want to go into the woods. There's so much we have to talk yeah, about. I know. And you know what? Uh, we can do a whole separate episode on, on just the insurance aspect of that. And that could take like 10 minutes. And we have all the other stuff that we want to cover. Well, just a quick question. Yeah. Did it did it start out at some point with jewelers appraising jewelry for double or whatever the high the, the the much higher price because insurance companies wouldn't insure the jewelry unless it was unless the customer was paying higher premiums on that jewelry no. or it was strictly the jewelers basically defrauding the people by by making it look like they're getting a good deal. That's the only reason? Yeah, because then the insurance companies figured it out. They said, oh, these guys are just making up the numbers. And and why are we going to pay out $25,000 on a on a piece that's not worth anywhere near that? Right. And that's how they save costs. And the way that they... So to your question about the premium, so what they do is they lower the premium. So the premiums are super low. You can appraise a $25,000 piece of jewelry for $250 in the right. state of New Hampshire. And you can say, hey... One day I have it, one day I don't. Here, insurance company, you got to replace this. That's taking a lot of risk with $250. Right. Even if you don't get all your money back, as long as you get back what you lost, as far as the insurance company is concerned, that's how they look at it. They say, look, you lost a, a two-carat diamond of a certain quality. Well, here's another two-carat diamond exactly like the one you lost. Just because I got a good deal on it doesn't mean it's, that you're not getting replacement that you lost. It's crazy. And you, uh, working in a hair salon before, you know, in the state of New Hampshire, you need a a license to cut a single strand of hair. Yep. But not to appraise a million dollars worth of jewelry for tax, insurance, yep. estate purposes, anything. Anyone can do it. Can anything we talk goes. about that for a minute? I think we just did. That's absolutely well, the, that's it right there in a nutshell. But in in reality, I mean, is there any kind of uh legislation that anyone's tried to pass to get this to, to, to stop? Yeah. Uh, and, and what happens is the big chain stores come in. So let's say I go to the state of New Hampshire and I ask a, a, a senator or one of the, the people in the in the House to say, pass this bill for me. You know, it says that you have to be a gemologist to, to do appraisals. Well, then the lobby comes in for the large uh, jewelry store chains, right? Mm. 
You think they're going to want to hire gemologists every time they want to write an appraisal? They can't afford to do that. They right. just want their regular staff people to do it. So they come in with their millions of dollars and they squish whatever legislation that you're trying to pass. That's why there isn't a single state in the. That's why there isn't a single place in the state of New Hampshire, or I mean, in the country that you know requires people to have appraisals. How how, how about other uh, other countries? Do they have standards of? Of who you know who should be appraising jewelry for for these important purposes? No, no, no. So it's the worldwide. No, there's no a a, anybody can do it. Who knows the whole world? Yeah, I don't know. I just know so for, people should really be asking credentials. Like who is qualified to be you know appraising my piece of jewelry before they just give it to anyone? Yeah, well, it's like if you know, not that you have to do it, but if you went into a hospital and they didn't board certify positions and they didn't have to be certified, and you just went in and said, "Hey, you know, I want to have some surgery," and you say, "Well, maybe I should look into this guy and see if it's really right. a doctor, you right? Know, well, or has any training to be a doctor?" It's the same thing. Well, I think a little bit better analogy would be like a real estate appraiser. They have to be licensed. Totally. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and you know, jewelry can be just as expensive as real estate. Yep. Right. So, I mean, you wouldn't buy a you wouldn't buy a you wouldn't buy a house based on an appraisal that says two hundred thousand uh, dollars for you know, th- and you get this this appraisal that says four hundred thousand and think that the property you just bought and was a appra- you know for two hundred thousand just because an appraisal says four hundred that you think it's worth four hundred. Right. Going back to why people think that when they pay a thousand dollars for something and they get an appraisal for two, why they think it's worth two, I really don't know. It's it's the impression that they get from the person they're buying it from. Right. You know? And and for me on the buying end well, yeah. that, you know, that's, well, I have to explain that every single day. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, that's part of the business, unfortunately. And, you know, for our part, you know, we do now, just to make sure we cover all of this, you know, we do increase the values of our appraisals of what over and above what somebody pays for it, but not because we're telling them they're getting this great deal and that there's, you know, it's really worth more than it is. We're just trying to cover them for the future, right? Because we know the price of gold can go up and down like crazy. It has in the last five years, right? So all of my customers who are insured and had appraisals say six, seven years ago, and had their jewelry appraised at four hundred dollars when gold was four hundred, and now it's thirteen hundred. They're covered. Well, not even. Even with the buffer that we put in, we couldn't have even predicted back then. Who would have thought that gold was at four hundred? That was going to go to thirteen. Nobody did. Right, right. And actually, what did 19. it go? Away? Yeah, it went 19. way up higher at one point. So, um, so how often do you recommend that they update their appraisals? Every five years. We we put enough of a buffer in there that we think that you're good for five years. We have so much to talk about. Can we talk? Going back to the credentials, can we show that first slide, Howard? Um, this appraisal is. Just unbelievable. Uh, one question I have for uh, you guys. Who's the name of the jeweler? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at the signature. Who is that? Well, was that just scribbled out, though? It looks like... No, that's a signature. Isn't it? Or no? no well, it looks like at the top of it, it was it was scribbled out. Wow. But anyway, you don't know. Even if it was But regardless, jeweler, all that no says is jeweler, not, nothing. Yeah, underneath no credentials it. whatsoever. No yeah. graduate gemologist. No. And if you are, it better be in there. I mean, uh, it's unbelievable. No, it, it's uh, it's typical. People, even the person, um, if you couldn't, if for instance you could read their name but you couldn't, even doesn't matter. They they True. they don't want to put their name to this appraisal. They don't want it to be to Legible. say that was necessarily that was. <laughs> and me. normally, below the signature, isn't their name printed? Um, I mean, not theirs yes. in this case, but on be. almost every like formal document. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's purposely done to deceive. <laughs> that, now, that, that's what it's all about. Now, one of the things that said there at the value um, said $7,000. Re- did it say re- retail value? Howard, can you go back up to, uh, uh, oh, replacement value. Yeah. So I know that's one of our, um, actually, that's our first bullet point are the different types. Yes. So do you want to talk about that now, the, the well, four different types? Well, let's just stay, yeah, with appraisals, and that's what people want. When you get an appraisal, you want it to be appraised for the replacement value. What's it going to cost to replace it? Well, no. I thought it was different. Um, We had the insurance value, which is going to be higher than what it's going to cost to replace, right? That's your buffer zone price, so it goes 
the replacement value is what 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 it would what you could buy it for new. Insurance value is higher than that because it's got that buffer zone. Then you have fair market value, which is somewhere in between liquidation and replacement, and then you have liquidation value. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, we well we we do those types of appraisals, and we we're, we're very specific about that. With this type of an appraisal, this is just someone who's just trying to put a value on a piece of jewelry and give it to someone for the insurance company, and that's what they put. They'll put replacement value on there to give the impression the impression to the person that's getting the appraisal that that's what's going to cost to replace it. It's not it's not an accurate value. That, well, that's no sure. doubt about that. Yeah, but but ours would say insurance appraisal, correct? Not replacement value. Well, when we well, we're going to get to one of our appraisals in a minute. So let's take a look at it when we get to that point. Okay. All right. Because at the bottom line is, really, what's more important about that appraisal is the fact that there's very little information about the the diamond that's that's on there. You know, if you're going to lose that diamond, the insurance company is going to go back and look at that form, and they're only going to get a small picture of the story of what it's going to cost to replace that piece. Because right. what's not on there is there's nothing that says anything about the dimensions of the stone doesn't say anything about the cut or the cut grade of the stone right the table percentage the crown angle all those things are you know about 50 50 percent more of the value so the insurance company could end up replacing this diamond with a diamond that's way lower quality than what they lost well that's what I was going to ask you next what would the insurance company replace this with but whatever whatever they basically want to I mean only they're going to do whatever the appraisal they're going to base their value their evaluation of it by the information that's on the doc so if document. they called you to replace this what would you give them an average quality cut diamond as opposed to our top of the line okay you know because that would be more expensive and we don't that's know that fair. that's what they had and i'm sure if they did it probably would have been written on there anyway because if you bought a high quality diamond hopefully the person would know it and put the information on the appraisal so chances are it wasn't right, right. and so they're not the insurance company's not obligated Let's go to the next one because I want to make sure that we get through all of these. Um, uh, this one's not number two, though. I don't. Is this the? Oh no, this is the one. So. Um, oh, this is the one that has so, the fine print film. at the bottom that says. And it's highlighted on clarity there. Clarity enhanced. Yep. All right. Well, there's, a, there's a few things about this one, so let's start. Um, could we go to the top? Actually, we'll start at the top and work our way down. To the to the clarity enhance because I think this is the one that also looks like it's a yeah see it looks like it's from a gemological accredited gemological institute so the first thing that's happening here is they're pretending that this is a certified diamond look at the letters A G I instead yeah. of G I A yeah this guys are it, unbelievable yeah this is a complete and total scam and I bet if you went to 37 West 47th Street Suite 600 is probably one guy in a tiny office half the size of the studio right. <laughs> sitting there you know cranking out these fake documents sure sure um, appraisal like appraisal report number like it's all you know really official and they they do this to give the impression the person the impression that they're not getting a diamond appraisal but they're, they're getting a diamond that's been certified by some lab that absolutely positively does not exist right and and i think we need to um make it clear to the audience that one thing that a diamond report or some people call it a certificate will never have the value on it right and the, let, we'll get to that so we did we got this let's take a look towards the middle let's take a look at some of the information that's on there so at least with this one it has some of the information on him but Right. But, but one of the good giveaways that this is not a certificate is the split color grades. They have an EF color grade. Now, you would never see that on a certified diamond. Um, you know, and then this other information about the cut, polish, and symmetry. You know, who's to say that, that they're excellent? I, chances are I'm almost 100% sure if you sent this out to a real gem lab that none of those cut grades would be accurate. Right. Um, and then we'll go to the SI1 that we highlighted here with the asterisk next to it. <laughs> And uh, and what and what that little asterisk meant, and what it means to the value of the diamond and the quality of the stone. So go ahead, I'll let you guys talk about Justin. that. Justin. Well, I mean, clarity enhanced. That could be one of you know a few different things, and some of them are they're all bad. First of all, they all uh, devalue the piece drastically. Yep. Some more than others. We we don't know. 
well, how this was clarity enhanced. Was it fracture filled? Was it laser drilled? Was it pulse etched into the stone to remove the clarity, you know, the uh, inclusion? We don't know what it is. Yeah, but but and it could be all three. Yeah, it, but it's it's a super serious problem, and it's the the tiniest font, the smallest right. printing yeah. right, on the entire document. I mean, it, and it's it, the most important thing. It's the most important thing. This is such a scam. Yeah, and they 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 make it even worse by by taking the most important piece of information that goes to the value of this diamond, which I'm sure that nineteen thousand is not even close to what it's even close to where it should be. And they're taking that fact and they're basically just doing everything they can to hide it, yet still be within the rules of the law. Right. Well, yeah. I, wa- I want to point out another thing. Look look at his signature. Yeah. Okay. Who Who is appraising this? And I will say one thing. He put a GG next to his scribble to, right. to make it look like graduate gemologist, which is the only place you can become a graduate gemologist is GIA. Yeah. Okay. He was never taught these ethics at GIA. Of course not. Being a teacher there, uh, we only taught the highest ethics possible, and uh, this guy should be ashamed of, ashamed of himself. If, if he is even a GG, he probably isn't. Right. But again, his name is nowhere on this document, and that signature could right. be anybody. Yeah. And, and you couldn't find this guy based on that signature, so he's got nothing to worry about. And like I said, this, this sweet 600 somewhere on 47th Street is... Long gone, you know, probably six months after he started doing this and moved to another suite later on. So, right. all right. So that's, so I think we really, you know, gave you a good in, uh, insight into that. And here's, here's more of a, a typical type, uh, small jewelry store kind of appraisal piece. Um, again, if you, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start with the top of it there a little bit like the first top half. You can see, uh, Wentz. Okay. He came and went. <laughs> Probably did. Less love. <laughs> yeah. Do you oh. think that's his real name? The but value of the ring went out the window. <laughs> <laughs> went out the window. Good, Good one, one, Howard. Howard. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's look at the details. It's handwritten. Um, you know, probably a good sign right away that, you know, um, you probably, especially this day and age, you know, that you're not dealing with somebody who has a lot of, uh, a lot of expertise. Right. Um, uh, it's not technologically advanced. <laughs> well, you would just like to think that, you know, no one's handwriting these out anymore. Let's see right. if we can. There we go. Um, let's see. Diamond Cushion green. made. Oh, custom made. Oh, I see. Okay. By Vanig. Yeah, so here we are in another situation where we have no measurements. We have of no, good quality. Yeah. You know, what, you know, no. No, his shape. Yeah. What's the shape of the diamond? Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, oh, it could around. be around. Yeah, Is I mean that. Okay. Yeah, and the insurance companies would, you know, they take in these appraisals. So shame on them for taking them in in the first place, right? Well, so, that's a whole other t- uh, subject we could talk about. Yeah. And it does say below here that it is a GIA certified diamond, so they had all the information they needed, and they still didn't even put it in there. Did they even put the GIA cert number no. on the appraisal? No, but I know down below it says, "Please no." GIA cert or something that is not in here anywhere. Let's take a look. Jeez. GIA cert. <laughs> Verify inf- uh, Awful. Awful. Yeah. You know, when, when we do an appraisal, we put the GIA in, in case that they ever lose the certificate, the GIA certifi- certificate number yep. or report numbers in our appraisal. So you can cross reference both. Uh, information uh, on the appraisal versus the uh, diamond report. Yep. It's just, this is just, uh, it's awful. It's sloppy. Yeah. It's sloppy work. I mean, there is um, very, again, very little information and here. And again, there's no, no credentials. credentials. Oh, yeah. Yep. Can read his name, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But actually, so. what was the appraiser's name? David Did- Went. Oh, okay. Got it. All right. <laughs> he came and went. <laughs> So here's another fake appraisal. I shouldn't say fake appraisal. Fake, what appears to be, yeah, yeah, fake certificate, which is in fact only an appraisal. Right. And you know, typically these will also be laminated to make it look like a a typical report that you would get from a a real lab. Don't forget the hologram. 
Oh, yeah. yeah Got to have one of those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so here's Universal Gemological Services, which, again, I guarantee you does not exist in any real real form. It's just a, just a made-up uh, logo. And, you know, you'll see these a lot with mall stores. They'll have these looking uh, plastic uh, reports that look like uh, certificates. Right. They'll take a picture of a random diamond. It's not even the one that's actually you're buying. It's just one that looks like the one that you're buying. It's never the actual stone. Um, you know, uh, description, one natural diamond. Well, that's probably about all that in the information on there that's accurate. Uh, the coloring, clarity grades, just so people know. These companies that set up these services uh, are going to misrepresent the grades for these other for these stores that are selling these certificates so that they can make look like they're selling higher quality diamonds than they really are right which which they're they're using the gia scale yep <laughs> but they're not using it accurately exactly and then here on the bottom you know this printed signature of who knows who this is same same old thing like uh, rachel was saying earlier who knows who this person is if they're a gemologist probably not you know right and um, because I'll be honest with you, if you really were a gemologist, you wouldn't want to sign off on any of these documents, really. Right. Oh, look at that. Photograph approximate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not the real no, stone. No, it's never the real stone. It's always some stone that just looks like it. Unbelievable. I mean, it, it's such a crappy thing to do. You yeah. Know? Um, because it saves money. You know, they don't want to take a picture of every diamond. They make one of these search for it. It's going to take too much time and cost too much money. Right, right. So you want to stay away from these. And you, you know what you can do as, as, a, as a shopper, you know, as an individual, is go online and see if these companies really exist. You know, does Universal Gemological Services really exist out there? Do they have a website? If they do, does it look legit? I mean, is it one page? You know, what? The, these guys are like a quasi, you know, the, 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 they're, they're real because they're affiliated with EGL, uh, but, but they're, they're, they're not grading accurately. No. You know, there's no gemologist here. The information's awful. The photograph isn't right. And the, the number one thing, and for everyone at, at home, uh, as soon as it has, and I said it before just to reiterate, if it, as soon as it has that price, it's yep. not a certificate. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Another typical example of, um, you know, I, 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 this is one of the ones I had in my file. Uh, what I liked about it is, you know, these standard appraisal forms that you can buy, you know, uh, out of a magazine, you know, like when you're buying paper or paper supplies, they, they sell these appraisal forms. Right. And so this guy <laughs> bought this, this generic appraisal form, not even jewelry, really, just item, right? And then he, he sticks one of those little stickers you put on your envelopes, you know, when you're sending out a letter. They don't do it anymore, I know, but to put a sticky on there with his name of his company on it. That's what that is. It's a sticky. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. It's like a little label. And then, you know, let's look at the information that this person, whoever oh, it is. Atkinson, New Hampshire. All right. Well, we probably should blur that out. Anyway. I was uh, just <laughs> thinking that. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that in uh, post. But anyhow... Um, you know, here, here's a person who put up a fifteen thousand dollar, you know, a very expensive uh, tennis bracelet, and uh, I don't think it says anything about the quality of the diamonds that are in there. At least I don't see no, anything. No, nothing. No. Just the count. Yeah, fifteen thousand dollars, and what did they have for quality? So now, on the <laughs> insurance company side, they could say, "Hey, you had like really low end diamonds, and that's what we're going to replace it with." And she's going to say, or the insured's going to say, "No, no, what are you talking about that? I was told that they were flawless diamonds, and blah blah blah." In your experience, does the insurance company do that? Um, they have the option to replace the quality that's written on. They they're obligated to do what's on the appraisal. Now look at the Omega necklace. I just no, go right back. Well, that's all. You can see it here. But uh, going back to the insurance question, are are in a situation like this with no quality, in your experience, do the insurance companies replace with the lowest quality they can? Probably somewhere. If they came to me, I would pick something again in the middle, an, an average quality. Then the insured would have to come back and argue that they had a better quality, and then you would have to say, "Well, can you prove it?" And then, of course, how could they? Because this guy with the sticker is probably long gone. This is not. So the insurance company doesn't bust your chops and say, hey, hey, this is, you know, I want it lower. And, and I want you to lose, use lower quality. They don't pressure you? 
not me, but I'm sure that they have other companies, larger corp. I know they have larger companies that they work with, where they will say to them, "Look, we're looking for the best deal," and then you figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The Omega necklace doesn't even have a gram weight on that's, there. That's why this one's such a great example. <laughs> you know, that thing could weigh thirty grams and cost three to four thousand dollars today yeah. to replace it, but yeah. you never know. Or it could have been a super thin. I mean, there's no millimeter gauge. There's no way to know. I mean, Omega necklaces coming. There's nothing on there. No, nope. just the length. Yep. And then the other uh, what piece there is lady diamond and ruby. That's a coin of some kind. Coin. Oh, coin. Uh, coin what? It looks like coin. Whatever. But I mean, you know, again, it's just. Unbelievable. That's. Oh, it's just, it's just not clearly the first two examples, if that wasn't enough, to show you that these people just don't know what they're doing. And even as a layperson, to see somebody get an appraisal for fifteen thousand dollars, right? With no, you know, with nothing about the quality of the diamonds that they had. I mean, the, this, bottom part. line: people should be pulling out their appraisals and going over them and making sure they don't look like these ones. We're absolutely, that's a great point. And if they do, they need to bring it to a local jeweler. There you go. Yep, and make sure that and do your research. Make that sure that they have a gemologist on staff credentials and look at their appraisal work. All right, let's th- tell you what, because we're really going over time. Here's just another example that we see all the time. Uh, again, what looks like something that was graded by a gem lab, IGI, uh, which in fact... Um, Gemological isn't even spelt right. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> you expect him to get everything right. <laughs> That's sad. That's the European way of spelling it, I guess. That is sad. Yeah. Yeah. And they're obviously very European from Fifth Avenue. (laughs) (laughs) That was a good one, Dave. Thanks. I'm on a roll. (laughs) Uh, I'm just, it's just, it's so silly. Yes. Um, You know, photograph enlarged. I'm sure it's not even, again, the actual photo and all of that. And, again, all the information is just very vague, and it's not very accurate uh, from our experience of what we see in terms of the uh, accuracy of the quality grade. But again, don't look at something like this and think you're getting something from a gem lab and that you've got a a certified diamond because you do not have that here. Right. This is just an estimated replacement value, uh, ergo a... Uh, or an, an appraisal. That's all this is. You want to see one of ours? Oh, an bogus appraisal. We've got to do it. Yep. So what does a really good one look like? Oh, wow. This is impressive. No, this is this is <laughs> what you should... Look at all that should, information. Yeah, and this is... This is what you should see, and this is what you didn't see in those other documents. And it's not like these rings that in this particular appraisal had any more or less diamonds than some of the other ones that you saw. Uh, this is just a, a ring that has uh, three diamonds on top and uh, you know a few small diamonds on the edges. And as you can see uh, here, the level of detail is, is very intense. And at the same time... Um, and it is insurance appraisal, not replacement value. Correct. There really isn't any such thing as a replacement value appraisal. I mean, you know, the, the replacement value only comes at the time when you're actually looking at it to replace it. But you're never going to be replacing it in advance because well, you, know, you don't know what the replacement value is going to be. Anyway, let's let's just keep going. Let, let, let's go through this. Just As you can see here, we're talking about the cut grades uh, and that they had very little information about them. And here you can see in this appraisal we put all the cut grade information in there so that you get the exact same high-quality diamond that you bought returned to you when it comes time for replacement, correct? Right, like all the dimensions are in there. Yep. The now, if a customer, you know, if the insurance company started to replace and, they, and, and someone came up with a diamond that wasn't quite like that, is there a, you know, does the customer have to say, hey, wait a second, I want my girdle thickness percentage right at 2.0, not 2.1. <laughs> is that a... Is that, you know, Again, that's, well, sure, why not? Okay. If the insurance company accepted this appraisal, they have to replace it with what they had. All well, right. uh, well, the next one would say our name. Yep. It'd say who the appraiser was, what credentials they have. Yep. It would be signed in English. <laughs> and even if you can't read the signature, their name is right below it. <laughs> exactly. Right. Printed. And that's the that you can clearly read. Yep, that's the most important part. So I I think we covered a lot of territory. We certainly went over our time for today, but we we there was a lot. There was a lot of information there, and if nothing else, if anybody walks away from this conversation, it's yeah, like Rachel said, you ought to go through the appraisals that you have at home, kind of see who did them. If they look like any of the ones that we had up there, you might want to reconsider 
you know, uh, having them redone. And plus, if it's been more than four or five years, the price of gold should have it done anyways. Bit. Yeah, price of diamonds have gone up. Everything's gone up. Right. So it'd be a good idea to reinvest some money into having those appraisals redone. One last thing, uh, right on that topic. Yeah. Let's tell everyone what an appraisal should cost from someone who's qualified that spent a lot of time getting educated and, and, and you know, all that stuff. It's not sure. going to be $25. No, well, there's two things. Um, I don't know that a lot of people are still doing this way, but they used to do it by a percentage basis, right. you know, which is obviously kind of criminal because obviously they're not going to, they're going to obviously in increase the value Boost of your appraisals so they can make more money. So you never want to deal with someone who's going to charge you based on a percentage of the value of all of your jewelry. Um, we do it by the hour. And those rates can run anywhere from, you know, uh, 75 to $125 an hour, depending on the circumstances, who's doing the work. Uh, is it done while you wait? Are the people leaving the items behind? How many items there are? But you always want to do it based on an hourly basis. And you want to make sure that the people that are doing it are graduate gemologists. Perfect. Right. right? Okay. All right. Well, thanks very much. I think we covered a lot of really good ground today. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you could certainly uh, reach us. Uh, my email address is david at bellmans.com. And we would be more than happy to answer your questions uh, in future shows. And if you have any ideas for shows that you'd like us to do in the future, by all means, let us know. So have a great day and thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, thank Dave. You. You're welcome. Great show.